I know what you're thinking. Michael, I love you. Thank you very much. I love you back. You're very lovely. Believe it or not, though, there are some people who don't love me. There are some people who don't even like me. You're a monster. And they've made mean TikToks to express their contempt for yours truly. And so we shall go to war. This video is brought to you by Birch Gold. More from Birch Gold in just a moment. First, though, let's get to the mean TikToks. Michael, why don't you know how to operate a washing machine? And why are you proud saying like, I have to have, I have to have my wife walk me through it. Are you that dumb? Are you that stupid? It's self-explanatory. I'll teach you. So you put the laundry in. Hey, hold on. Put a pause right there. First of all, the washing machine that I got when I bought my house, it was the previous owners got it, is some weird Scandinavian spaceship thing that only has one button and 300 settings. This is too much. This is nothing. Yes, the machine that she's using there looks relatively, I, I still probably couldn't do it, but it looks relatively easier to use. But the one that I'm using, you need an advanced degree, which is why I have to turn to my PhD wife. You can choose what kind of wash you want. You can literally pick normal almost every f time it will wash your sh and then you hit the start What a button. mouth on this girl, by the way. You can say that it just doesn't come naturally to you and that's why you can't figure out how to work a washing machine, but that is not it. You're just f lazy. <laughs> this is pretty You're just though. treating your wife like your mom. And that sucks for her. You like that she, in your world, in your religion, in your reality, you like that your wife has to do all that sh because you just can't be bothered with it. You don't know how to do your own laundry and you look like you're pushing 40. Look like I'm pushing 40, hold on. Do the cigars and the coffee and the whiskey and the general lack of water, does that really age me so much? I guess it does. She makes an interesting point here where she says, Michael, you treat your wife like your mother. I guess in some ways I do, in that when I was a little kid, growing up, my mother would cook my dinner. And now I'm an adult and my wife cooks my dinner. But I don't treat my wife like my mother. I treat my wife like my wife. That's a crazy idea. When, when she says you treat your wife like your mother, you crazy, awful, terrible conservatives, she's admitting that there is such a thing as normal gender roles. Now I gotcha. She wants to deny the gender roles for the wife, but she's acknowledging the natural gender roles of the mother. She's referring to the type of the mother, but the wife is just a mother to somebody else. Overall, though, that was a funny, that was a funny bit. I, I got a kick out of her, even as she criticized me. Next one. I'm kind of familiar with this argument that like, Hunter, you've never actually talked to any of the smart conservatives. Can you give me an example of a smart conservative? Michael Knowles, Matt Walsh, Liz Wheeler. So Michael Knowles says, both the libs and conservatives have taken freedom of speech to an absurd extreme, invoking it to justify all manner of historically unprotected speech, such as a blasphemy, etc. Blasphemy? I'm pretty sure the Constitution directly talks about how the state should not demean or uplift certain religions. So, so what, put, a, put a pause there. It, the Constitution very much doesn't talk about that. Yeah, yeah, tell him, tell him. What is he talking about? Is he, is he referring to the First Amendment, which says that at the federal level, there won't be an established church? That's true. That doesn't mean that the government can't demean or uplift certain religious views. The, the reason that the First Amendment prohibited the establishment of a church at the federal level is because there were already established churches at the state level. So at the state level, the churches did uplift one religion and shut out other sorts of religious views. But, but even beyond that, the state for virtually all of American history has had blasphemy laws. Watch your profanity. Some are still on the books, they just aren't really put into practice. But no, we, we've outlawed blasphemy for much of American history. This, by the way, from the smart conservative you referenced. Because Michael Knowles is smart enough to realize that that the Founding Fathers wrote the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution knowing those freedoms weren't es weren't established by, by just some random government authority. They were born with those rights. They were granted by a creator and that you cannot speak out against that creator. No, this is directly in contrary to what the Founding Fathers believed and how America was formed. So America began literally because they didn't like the fact that there was an enforced religion over in England where they all had to ch attend the English church. They didn't like that. So they set up yeah. America so that you could practice your own religion you and the government no, 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 would no. not. He's, he's going all the way back. So not just to 1776, but to 1620 when some of my ancestors came over, very religiously zealous people on the Mayflower. And 
He's right that they came over because they did not like the Church of England, but they did not come over because they believed that you had a right to your religious views. <laughs> and in fact, when those Puritans in Plymouth and Massachusetts, Rhode Island, when they established their colonies and people dissented from the established religious views there, they would banish them. Get out of here! And so that goes back to 1620. Then you come up through 1776 and the founding fathers after the American Revolution. And what did they say? Did they say, we have rights because we say so and you can think whatever you want? No, they said, our creator endows us with certain unalienable rights. And then furthermore, John Adams says, the spirit of America, the, the moral order that will order America will be the Christian moral order. Can I get an what this guy, Hunter, I think he said his name was, what he says is, That's, what are you talking about? That's crazy. Doesn't the Constitution... And then he just rants about something that he wishes were in the Constitution. But he's just pulling that out of thin air. Notice, he's not citing the Constitution. He's not citing the early Americans. He's not citing American law. Obviously, he can't because all of that backs up what I have to say. And so what he is doing is what the liberals so often do, which is they will merely state their own views and their own preferences for how America would be governed. And then they will say, and that's what America's always been about from the beginning. But they never quote anybody and they never cite any sources and they never cite American history and how the country's actually developed in practice because they know that it contradicts the fantasies that they want America to be. You know, when, when we want to tether our society to reality, one great way to do that would be to have real money. And when you want real tangible assets, you gotta check out Birch Gold. The Fed has a tendency to print money during times of economic distress, like they did during the COVID-19 pandemic. This has resulted in the loss of value of a dollar and an increase in the value of precious metals like gold. Gold will always have inherent value because it's a tangible and finite resource, uncontrolled by any single government or financial institution. As the value of our dollar declines, it becomes increasingly important to hedge against inflation by diversifying at least some of your assets into precious metals. The only company I trust to help you diversify into precious metals is Birch Gold. Birch Gold makes it easy to convert your IRA or 401k into a tax-sheltered IRA backed by physical gold and silver. With an A-plus rating with the Better Business Bureau, thousands of happy customers, countless five-star reviews, Birch Gold is the company that I trust to protect my future. So should you. Right now, text Knowles, K-N-O-W-L-E-S, to 989898 to claim your free info kit on gold and talk to a precious metals expert. You get that info by texting Knowles, K-N-O-W-L-E-S, to 989898. Hi guys, okay, I'm not doing too good right now, but I would really appreciate it if you take the time to watch this whole video, please. Transgenderism must be eradicated from public life entirely. The whole preposterous ideology at every level. Okay, so that happened just a few days ago, but let me read you a quote that's a bit older. Are? It is recommended that the phenomena of transvestism is exterminated from public life. Did you guess where that's from? The quote I just read was said in 1938 yeah, by the Institute of Forensic Medicine in Nazi Germany. And nearly the exact same thing is being said today by conservatives. Oh they do God. not want us alive. Oh we are Wait, witnessing is she a trans? the beginning of Doesn't history like repeating itself. History is repeating itself. Everything that I don't like is Hitler. Goodness gracious me. In that speech that she quoted, the exact quote I said was, for the good of society and especially for the good of the poor people who have fallen prey to this confusion, uh, transgenderism must be eradicated from public life entirely the whole preposterous ideology at every level. I've now memorized it because it's come up so much. I don't think she needs to look to 1930s Germany to try to infer and intuit what I meant. I said it pretty clearly. I said for the good of the people, especially who've fallen prey to this confusion. So presumably I wouldn't want to murder them. I use the term eradicated, which is to pull out from the root. So you're correcting the premises of this ideology. These people seem very upset and they seem very unhappy and they seem like they've got a tenuous grasp on reality and it would probably be good to help them to become more grounded in reality rather than to fly off the handle and cry because I made a perfectly fine speech. Look at little Goplin Jr. gonna cry. I do not know how to operate the laundry machine in my home. I don't know how to do it. I have un maybe a couple of occasions when my wife said, oh, could you go put the laundry in? I have done it. I have had to ask her to guide me every step of the way. That is not is something that, that comes Ponte naturally. 10-year-olds know how to do laundry. 
Like, if you don't have the mental capacity of a 10-year-old and you can't accomplish tasks <laughs> that a literal child could accomplish, your opinion shouldn't matter about anything. Does it bother you to use inclusive language? Well, it's I, just interesting I, I prefer to use precise language. I'm sorry, you can't press start on a machine? You can't read the, the, the label? It's labeled for you. Literally okay, put a pause. Okay, one more time. Again, I have a very fancy laundry machine. Okay, jeez. I didn't ask for it. I didn't buy it. It just came with my house, and I don't speak Norwegian or whatever I have to speak to get this thing to work. And it's, I, I'm not, def, I'm, I couldn't probably do it even on a regular laundry machine, or I wouldn't take the time to at least. But please, I want everyone to understand, I have a very, very fancy washing machine. Mr. Fancy Pants. For anyone who's unaware of the terminology, this is called weaponized incompetence. It's also called manipulative. Oh, strategy. that is so interesting. A person uses this to avoid having to do an action again in the future. It also puts the responsibility of the yeah, task on the person to complete. Put a pause there. The She's not wrong. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> you know, I mean, I'm happy to call out Bronte when she gets things wrong. She often does. Pregnant person. Yeah, it's true. I don't, I don't want to do the laundry. And so I, I don't make any effort to get good at the laundry. So whenever someone does this, it means that they don't care about their partner. They have little value for their partner because they don't care that it's going to take their partner extra time, energy, and effort to compensate for their pretend incompetence. That's really sh** and says a lot about you as a person. She, she gets a lot of things wrong. And one of the things she gets wrong is feminism. Ah! Feminism insists that men and women are exactly the same. We all we need to split the house chores 50-50, and you, I washed 11 dishes tonight, so you better wash 11 too, or else it's not totally, that's not how it works. That's not how it works. Because men and women are different. We have different strengths, and we have different desires. We have different natures. Measures of happiness over the last 50 years since the advent of feminism show that men and women have become less happy, and women have become less happy, even less happy, relative to men. Why is that? Because of the great wonders of feminism? Yes, actually. Feminism didn't deliver. It's okay. It's okay for the wife to do the laundry. It's okay for the man to bring home the bacon. Probably you're going to be happier that way. What's my favorite one? You know the answer. It was the first one. It was the washing machine gal. Are you that She's dumb? an articulate gal. She's pretty stupid? funny, nice, young, attractive lady. She can do better. Quit spending your time criticizing a lovely fellow such as myself. Focus on reality. Find that to be a little more edifying, perhaps even sanctifying. See you next time. Do you